Hello, and welcome to the Nickel Deadline. Uh, we, we were on a deadline, we've passed it, and we're here now. Uh, and, uh, well, thank you for, for coming and tuning in. My name is Mike Friday. I'm with the Nickel Independent Film Festival. I am joined here by Wanda Nolan and Veronica Diamond. Uh, and we are going to go through some quick prompts. You are probably preparing for the 48-hour horror challenge, which is starting tomorrow evening. Uh, and running through this weekend. And we are gonna go through some quick prompts. We're gonna show you the fastest, not even close to the best way, but definitely the fastest way to create stories. Uh, we're just going to run through prompts as quickly as we can. And uh, maybe that'll Im Im impress you. Maybe that'll impress some ideas upon you on how you're going to approach your prompts when you get them. Uh, and if nothing else, it's going to show you a way you definitely don't wanna do things. All of these things are very useful uh, when it comes to weeding out your creative process. Uh, so do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Wanda. Yep. Uh, I'm Wanda Nolan. I'm a writer, director, and story consultant here in St. John's. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm Veronica Diamond. I'm a stand-up comedian and writer, and I've made a couple of short films, often through Nickel Challenges. So I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so Veronica, you've done a bunch of challenges. I wouldn't call it a bunch, but I've done a couple of challenges. I think I've done four, maybe? That's a bunch. That's a, okay. that's a bunch. That's a bunch? Okay, yeah. that's officially yeah. a bunch? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah. If I got four bananas, I'd be okay with it. <laughs> I I'd call it a bunch of bananas. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. fair enough. Then I have done a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm wondering, you haven't done challenges before, but you have done... I've made shorts. I've made like four shorts. Yeah. 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 But so, I haven't done the challenges, no. But but you've done so much, uh, and, and I love your, your process on breaking down stories. Uh, and I think like we've, uh, myself and Veronica have done quite a few challenges. And even we, I think, have different ways of, of breaking them down. Yeah. And I think it would be great to... to yeah, get all of this input on breaking stories and, and just trying to dig into them as quickly as possible. How to break down the stories so you don't break down yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't have any breakdowns. No breakdowns, <laughs> not allowed during the, the, the challenges. They're supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be fun. They're and I hope they are fun. I they hope are. you have a good I've, time I've this had, weekend. I've had a good time on mm -hmm. all of them. Um, do you want to talk just a little bit about, like, generally, like, when you're working on a, on a film uh, and you get... Uh, kind of an idea kind of like the first seed for things want like what do you what do you think about and how do you kind of move forward from that you know i i think i generally probably themes is really usually it's something that's bothering me and i have a question around it and it comes up uh or there might be an image or something sometimes it's sound like the basement library of the uh of the Mun Library, the, the the sound in that like really like uh, evoked a whole scene in a film that I wrote. So it comes from a lot of different things. It's it's hard now to think about it, but I think it's theme and character for me. So when I have like something I'm thinking about, then often the character just starts showing up and and visuals around that. I, I don't know if that it's very ephemeral at the beginning for okay. sure, right? Like yeah, it's. It's kind of like just something, and then I just start thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it, and it becomes something, yeah. And I do a million different drafts, and like just I've learned over the years to have a willingness to play with the idea, like rather than feeling. That's why I love this riffing and stuff like that. And anytime I teach a film class, it's just the like just to riff on an idea and just to have fun with it, like not to fit, forget that portion of it. So. Uh, and it's made the writing so much better because of that. And I think it improves your writing as well, that willingness. And also the will, you have to stick with an idea at the same time, do you know what I mean? And I think people that don't stick to an idea is usually more the fear, which I've done, you throw it all out because of fear, but yeah. So it's a little bit of a mix of both, of like playing with it, but just sticking with that idea, but a willingness to just play with it. I don't know if that makes any sense or... <laughs> what, when you say play with it do you mean like you just try just like start trying stuff yeah and, and... I just think like yeah it's a lot it's a lot of mental processing a lot of walking uh, for me that's how I do a lot of writing and just imagining them different worlds and really thinking about who that character is the world that they're in you know and all of that kind of like uh, film stuff like what's their flaw what's their problem like you know what are they bumping up against like uh, where do you know what why are we seeing them there at this moment usually you want to meet a character character at the beginning in a moment of change like something there's a reason why we're tuning in at this moment so we kind of meet them usually in a certain belief system so I'm like who are they what do they feel and what is kind of 
interrupting that belief system in this moment in their lives that will make us want to watch that film and say, hey, I want to see how this person deals with this challenge and, and how they will either overcome it or not. And with horror, they may not. Like, yeah, yeah so that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of the process. It's not obviously, I don't think about it as much as this. It's just, yeah, I just get obsessed. I mean, really, that's what happens. I just get obsessed and I obsessively think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think like going for walks is is a is a big thing. Just kind of like I, I do a lot of wandering to wander around and just let the idea kind of bounce around in your head. Yeah, and a a thing that I learned from someone else is when I before I start writing, I always do like a seven to ten. Not always, depending on where I am in the project. But at the beginning, especially when you have all that resistance, I take I put a timer on for ten minutes. I'll just write whatever stream of conscience generally i can't do this this is shit this is terrible and it works remarkably well so you, you just do this like this is sucks this is horrible and then you kind of get all that shit out and then you're like okay so <laughs> and it, it really surprisingly works so i would definitely suggest that I, take, yeah. yeah take that 10 minutes yeah, yeah. like yeah you, you eventually run out of insults for yourself <laughs> yeah, you that's have, right. all you have left is i i gotta do some work now yeah, yeah. i definitely support that i i do what i call a vomit draft which is just get all the ideas out uh, not pretty, not thinking about them, just like if it's, been, it's if it's been an idea that's been in my head for a while, I'll just p put out the first draft. It does not look good, but a lot of the ideas are there and you can shape ideas in a way that you can't just shape concepts, like an abstract concept in your head. Once it's been written out, you can be like, okay, I don't really... Like, I wrote that sentence, but that's not really what I meant in terms of the description. She doesn't really fit this description. This would be a better one. And then you, you know, you can shape and modify after the idea is on paper, but you've got to get it on paper. 100%. And the only way you can get it on paper, or the only way I can down. get it on paper is just do it. Slam it out. <laughs> and it's, it's so, it's exactly what you're saying. It's, there's the story and then there's the craft, but you got to have the story down first. So yeah. the idea, right. And then, then you can start thinking more about the craft and kind of, and the more you do it, then you're thinking about it at the beginning of the process, but it's like, just slam it down for yeah. sure. And then, yeah, then start thinking about, okay, like asking those questions of like, why are we meeting them here? Cause often too, first, what you write is about 10 minutes of there's is you're just getting to know the character, and then later you'll go, okay, well, actually the story starts 10, 20 minutes from now, yeah, like, you know, and, and all and those things, you right? You develop and flesh out those characters. I find when you've got a character that's really, like, clear, or when I've got a character that's really clear in my head, I know what that character would do in that moment, according to the, you know, the story. The story there's not necessarily a plot that I've, I've hit and like you've got to hit these plot points it's like what would this character have in response to this like element that has been introduced to their life right it, you, exactly you can have some characters inciting making incident. decisions creates plot exactly if you try to force plot but putting your character in difficult situations where they have to make decisions that creates plot and like instead of doing it the backward or yeah. not backward way but the other way because we often think oh my god we got to have these things happen but if you're going through the lens of your character and exactly what you're saying then it's kind of like okay cool we'll just put them in the, all the worst situations yeah put them <laughs> especially in, in horror in terrible then, situations see what they see do what happens. <laughs> put them in a bad jar shake up the jar yeah, and see what the character does, after and, that. and their reactions and the choices they make is the investment by the audience as well, because you're in their point of view, and you're like, you know, you really want the audience to be going, "Fuck, what would I do in that situation?" Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Mike? What do you uh, do with yours? Uh, I, I, well, I was, I, I was saying this earlier, but for the challenges, I, I tend to like specifically for the challenges, I, I tend to just go with the very first thing that pops into my head. Uh, I try to spend as little time thinking about it as possible uh, and just try to start putting things uh, on the page, uh, which is not, a, I, it's not how I approach bigger projects. A lot of times with bigger projects, yeah, I'll be walking around and I'll be thinking about it for a long time. But for uh, challenges that have to be done really, really quickly, in the past few that I've done, I've tried to put the extra thing to say, I, I only want to spend five hours on this, like total. I want to write it, shoot yes. it, and edit it in mm -hmm. five hours because if I think my uh, my worst enemy is my own brain, so I, I start to think about it too much, and I will start to make it bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, and so I I will try to just go with that first instinct, 
and just see if I can just let it ride just uh, yeah. all the all the way to the to the end. Yeah. With the, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. With the challenges that I've done, I've I've like had an idea. I've had speaking to kind of what you were talking about, where the initial germ of an idea comes from. It's usually some sort of emotional experience that I'm going through, sort of something that makes me feel passionate um, that I've that's been in my brain for a while. Taking that sort of emotional beginning coming up with a character and like you said mike just for the challenges especially following that impulse to see where it goes because you don't have enough time in a challenge to really overthink it you really have to go with your first gut instinct and it might not be that great but that's not the point of the challenges the challenges are to get them done done is better than great or perfect or whatever this like ephemeral idea you have in your head is yeah keep it simple keep it simple go with your first impulse try and and just keep it keep the project moving along what's the next step what's the next thing until you've got a little story and then what's the next step you've got to storyboard the script that you've just written and what's the next step now we'll contact people but the challenges are fantastic for keeping things moving (laughs) because it's so easy when you're a writer to stagnate (laughs) right yeah and i i I actually i really like that already of just that idea of because sometimes you can think like what happens in the movie and that is such a big idea but Mm -hmm. thinking what decisions can i have this character make uh and and drive things forward I, i know that's something that uh can really like rein in i i feel like a lot of writing is reining in uh, trying to like pull an idea down to its like little core and its its buttons, uh, and I love I love that idea right away of just thinking like who's in this movie and what is the decision that they make. That... Yeah, and then what's the next decision? And keep if for these sorts of things, I imagine it's like keep it like one location, <laughs> like you know, and it's just whatever. Then you can bump them up against, yeah. like whatever you can throw in that location against them. You know. Yeah. I think also with this as well is like you can do a lot of stuff with just directing in this as well, like like a, 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 a like a, a close up, a crazy close up after a mo- like you know a, a certain moment can really also propel the plot like a willingness to like have fun and take risks of how you shoot it like you know because it's very easy to kind of like okay so we got all our stuff but like that willingness to kind of like either like just switch things up a bit hard cuts or whatever you know that kind of having fun but keeping the idea very simple it's like you said okay this is the situation so this is the catalyst of the story <laughs> what what are they going to do in that moment okay what's going to happen what are the consequences of that action then you know yeah uh, to that point we, I, i'm not sure if this is going to happen with the horror challenge but the 48 hour challenge i did a couple of years ago they gave a directing prompt like a a style of shot that you had to include and a style of edit that you had to include which i found fascinating because it forces you as a director to try out something that you did not necessarily have in mind for that story um or try something new in my case uh and 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 find moments i believe we had to do a tracking shot and a jump cut uh and Though, you know, a jump cut doesn't necessarily belong in every kind of story, but finding a place in a, you know, supernatural thriller to have a jump cut, maybe there, there there's more there than you had initially thought. Um, so challenges are really fantastic for yeah. pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone, trying extreme close-ups, yes. trying extreme wide shots, trying wild props or wild special effects. You know, you're never going to figure out how to make special effects unless you actually try and do it. This is a great opportunity to do it. And you can yeah. be silly or, or like you can put your, your whole heart into it, but like pushing yourself is definitely the point of these things totally and remembering the visual aspect of it that it is kind of a directing challenge as well because there's so much you can say without dialogue like and almost challenging yourself to tell as much of the story as you can just through the visuals like so the characters actions and the kind of the world that they're in like you know that that will also tell a lot of the story as well which is kind of fun like i i i often when i'm teaching a class i'll I'll get people to write a scene where there's like no dialogue so thinking about that as well you know and um yeah if you if you have a good care good characters but you also put them in an interesting setting that can also be helpful sometimes Mm -hmm. for finding moments character revealing moments or issues 
like uh, conflicts that, that might come up. If you're having two characters sitting in a coffee shop, that's less exciting than say if they were in a kitchen and one of them is cooking and the other one is trying to like sneak p pieces of turkey while the other one is cooking and you know that creates a, an extra dynamic or are they in an interesting place someplace that has hazards around that has a, you know a challenge uh, you you can draw out more conflict by putting interesting characters into interesting settings as especially well. settings they can't escape from <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. for sure yeah. <laughs> yeah i think there's some great there's some great challenge nuggets in there right because uh, you, you do like if you have a cool place in your house if yeah. you have unfinished basements for the horror challenge everybody with an unfinished basement already has a fully decked out horror set um <laughs> And so, Correct. like, you can use that stuff. That's a, if if you have a, a cool park around your house, or you have these are these are things that you can use to help narrow yeah. your idea down. Or do you live near the woods? Now they're spooky woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yeah, if you can tell a story without sound, then you don't need sound equipment. Right? That's, that's oh, that's so much interesting fast. too. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Fast. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give some prompts uh, and thinking about that stuff that that we're talking about here. Uh, I think it's, I think it's nice. Like I, I was, I was kind of thinking talking through story beats, but also uh, if there are things that, that come up um, that you might say like, Oh, this reminds me that maybe a cool, that there's like a cool shot technique or, or some directing challenge that I think I could give myself. Um, I do really agree. I think that the challenges are a great time to try stuff that you don't know if it's going to work. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're doing that on your, magnum opus then you're taking a big risk but for something like this that that we're you know we're, we're all going out and we're kind of failing joyfully mm -hmm. at something together uh these are these are great opportunities to bring out that big challenge if there's cool shots that you've seen in movies and you're like i just kind of want to try that shot from yes. <laughs> you know that shot from skyfall where he walks in and has his eye i just kind of want to make a blood explosion yeah when you do that it's a horror challenge just <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'll I'll do one first, uh, just to kind of just to kind of show you what I'm what I'm thinking of. Great. Uh, so I, maybe I'll, Elling, I'll get you. Elling is also here doing all of our tech. Yes, here I'm. I'm uh, yes, oh, look at that. Look at that. Seamless. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, I'm here. You can't see me now, but uh, but I'm here uh, pressing buttons and pretending like I know what I'm doing. But um, I just wanted to remind the about the phone number. That yes. I, oh, yes. Thank you. Um, there, there is a phone number seven zero nine seven zero one dead d d a d. <laughs> Please call. Um, it's the deadline. <laughs> it's, it's the deadline. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I didn't come up with it. That's their joke. That's theirs. <laughs> it's, it was done with Veronica in mind, <laughs> knowing that Veronica was going to be a part of it. Um, yeah. So uh, call in, and uh, if you uh, if we catch you in time, you could be maybe take part in in one of the rounds. Um, uh, we'll uh, we'll see. We'll I'll I'll let people know when when the phone is ringing. Maybe wait for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> to call but uh <laughs> feel free to do it uh and uh yeah yeah if you see what we're doing here with this 60 second thing and you're like i could do that i could absolutely nail that uh then call in and we'll we'll <laughs> we'll give you a prompt absolutely uh, yeah or, or if there's anything that you want to that you want to chat about horror wise we're we're here uh Okay, so I'll give uh, like maybe you can give me something off this list so I don't cheat and just take. Oh, to have like. you randomly do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's one. The assignment, school or work assignment, leads to a horror scenario. School or work assignment leads to a horror scenario. So I, I guess the first things I'm thinking of are uh, we have a student alone uh, in their house, so they're they're separated. They have this task that is starting to wear on their mind. Um, so maybe they're looking for an interesting, uh, uh, okay, yeah, so they're, they're doing a, an assignment. They have to, they're on like the bibliography section and they're like, okay, I have to find more references for this. So they go to the library that like sort of uh, the, the Mun library, the, the part where they have to move all the shelves back and forth, the archives. Uh, they find a spooky book down there that when they open it and read it, uh, it kind of unleashes something. And now there's something following them uh, that's driving them further and further into this project. Uh, it is, they, they've become obsessed 
they're they're writing and writing and writing and we're seeing sort of time pass away uh and then eventually it is uh somebody else getting shown into that same apartment and there is just a skeleton at the table yes. uh they have worked themselves to the bone <laughs> <laughs> and that's great. Uh, that's so that's that's like that's what I would immediately think of. Great. great. That's wow. sixty seconds. Okay, amazing. 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 Oh have, yes, we have buzzers. For I'm the... terrified. <laughs> I haven't heard any of these prompts, but that that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, that was a full story. I went on a journey. <laughs> when you when you said the, the door opened to the new apartment and there's a skeleton, I literally gasped. I went, <gasps> <laughs> I may need help with my prompt just to let yeah. you guys know. So please jump in. Yeah, but I, I think it, it's like that's the that's that's kind of how I would generally approach these things is just try to get yeah. as much of it out as possible. Uh and then like moving into that, I'm immediately thinking of of Mun, but I might find out that that's not an option. Like maybe I can't go uh out of the house or anything. So is there like an uh, encyclopedia set or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like maybe maybe you d- adapt it into a haunted Wikipedia article. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It could be the ring type thing as well. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just clicking and going down a rabbit YouTube hole. Just YouTube links. And- yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could be, that could be great. Um, so who, who wants to go next? I can go next. Like you're Veronica? Okay. okay. Uh, let's try... I'm daunted now because that was so yeah, good and so that effortless. Was, that was a complete idea. Uh, okay, let's 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 do this. There's a, there's some there's some techie ones on here. So this one is called the uninvited. An invisible entity joins a video call. Okay, okay. So an invisible entity joins a video call. Um, I mean, I'm thinking that when I think about video calls, I always think about COVID. So this is going to be a period piece set during COVID. (laughs) And um, it's somebody who uh, has a job interview. Uh, That's our main character. And they're preparing for a job interview. And um, yeah, they, they connect to a person. They can hear the voice, but they can't get the video call operating. So I think it's a it's a short and it's just uh, an interaction. Maybe they're like trying to coach this other person. Okay, like, oh, I can help you with your, your video. You know, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And they're like, no, 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 everything will be fine. And maybe, um, yeah, then, then oh, okay. So the, the video call ends and they were like, oh, that's a little bit strange, but the, they got their job interview. So they go to this home maybe to like go in to help this person who, was not good with techie things and they're like yeah i I can help you out with your tech problems uh only to discover that there is nobody in the house and they've been like that they can't open the doors anymore and they're stuck in this place with uh, a camera uh and and they're they're being monitored now they're the the thing that's on the camera i don't know that was (laughs) that's that's it i'm impressed i'm impressed i'm already having a panic attack about mine (laughs) it is cool like it's 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 cool to hear other people like go through like where where your mind goes it's one of the things that's so great is uh, because a lot of the horror challenges in the past everybody kind of got the same uh prompt but you still get totally different films out of each one of them yeah Absolutely. i like how you made like this relatable situation because i think that really helps the audience understand the, the ethos the world right away and then it's like okay some kind of weird thing happens right it's like it's relatable and then it's like shit something you know something happens yeah so. I, 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 I it's not fully there yet it's not fully developed but like for a vomit draft i think that would be a good vomit version and, and there then... might be vomit in the film so it could work, <laughs> like. exactly exactly <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, we had a main character. We had kind of a <laughs> setting. We had kind of a, a weird, spooky vibe. I love, think that's about it. Love. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you think? Uh, do you do you usually find it helpful? Is there anything in in horror that you feel like there are uh, like checkpoints or anything that you that you feel like you need to hit? Like we're we're looking at five minutes, um, which is a it's a challenge in itself to make a to make a full. A good, yeah. Film in in five minutes uh, to to sort of tell a story and and with the uh, with the horror challenge, uh, one interesting thing about it is a lot of horror shorts don't necessarily tell a whole story all mm-hmm. through them. A lot of mm-hmm. like the horror shorts you might see online are kind of built around the rules of scaring the audience um, and are kind of like building and all about tension. Um, do you feel like there's anything in like a five minute like a five minute goalposts or anything that people 
would aim for? I think you need to be able to instantly recognize the main character and their world. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you need to go, oh, that's a student who's stressing out. Oh, that's, you know, somebody who is desperate for a job. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you know, that a quick beat that's like, okay, I know who this character is and, straight up. And why know? the audience needs to care about that person. Yes, like what's, exactly. Like, what, what's going d different in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or what's an element about them that you kind of like sympathize with? Yeah, it's about yeah. Because you could see that person in yours, like you know, kind of like getting their you know whatever shirt ready and like kind of like, okay, like you know, just psyching themselves up for the interview. And these are just all again that visual action. It's like okay, and then we come on, and then we get the twist, the the reason why we're here, and that's the you know the weird entity that shows up. And it's like okay, what's the decision they're going to make? And first, like it seems for yours was just like okay, I don't really know what's going on. I'm just going to try to help out here because you know it, it is this weird anomaly and then they get pulled into this mm -hmm. bizarre world where they're now kind of like you know full circle yeah i, I feel like what i described is probably the introduction to a horror film mm -hmm. rather than a full horror film in and of itself but that's that's all the hey, taste that you need for it you short. had an ending there so i think <laughs> yeah and like a lot of like longer horror films have that that cold open where they, yeah. it's kind of just a horror short that's like almost a proof of concept of yes. what's about to happen right so. i, I kind of i know this is impossible and this is a problem with me because i you know i tend to write long format it's like i like when the uh the entity or whatever also has kind of a, a stakes in it you know oh, so, yeah. yeah i like most most horror doesn't have that but i i do kind of like that when the the bad kind of have they have a purpose and a need as well right it might yeah. not be the most uh you know kind or anything like that but they have a need <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and i mean if the villain or if the antagonist whatever they're going up against has a need or a want as strong or stronger than well, the protagonist i yeah. mean that's well that's the that's the stakes mm, right yeah. yeah that's good conflict <laughs> uh okay wanda let's let's try one um Oh, here's, okay, this one is uh, Dark Shadows. Characters are haunted by shadows. Ooh, Dark Shadows and characters are haunted by shadows. I think, like, first thing, because I've been thinking about, I was thinking about, like, maybe a uh, parking garage and uh, this woman who is terrified to park in parking garages <laughs> and her and her friend is like, they have to, anyway, they have to go in there. She's afraid of... She's not a good parker, so she has to park in the very back of the parking garage because she doesn't know how to park very well. Um, dark shadows. And, uh, you know, it's kind of fun to have, like, maybe she's by herself. It'd be better if she's by herself. It's higher stakes. She's very anxious about going in there, has no choice, can't park properly, tries to park. Could be funny, too. Then has to park in the back. I actually have to do this because I'm not a good parker, <laughs> and I'm always terrified. And then some weird kind of, like, false start where... There's some shadow, like, you know, we see a face that's in the background and it's actually fine, you know, and mm -hmm. she's kind of running through. But as she's going through, she actually can't find an exit out. So she's stuck in that world. And I don't know. And then there's some jump scare where, you know, she's taken into the dark shadow. So mm -hmm. to me, then I the first thought I would have then is like, OK, what's her kind of core thing? Like, is she like a super lonely person? And this is like like if we could establish some kind of beat where she's dealing with loneliness or something and then there's this like there's something about dark and shadow and loneliness or something like mm. so there's this like pull into this dark lonely I, obviously that's not cinematic or dra dramatized in anything i'm saying at this point but if you could dramatize that in some way it could be interesting so that's great no that's fantastic oh my already. God, I, I can that. i can imagine like a, a parking garage and like the lights are flickering. Yeah, so. right. There's lots of like aesthetic type things. And it's fun to have that like false beat too, you know, where you're like, think you're going to get that jump scare maybe. And then it's like, it's just some kind of mundane sort of thing. Yeah. 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 I think there's a cool thing with the uh, parking garages too, where they have that circular mirror that shows around the corner. Mm -hmm. That's probably a good That's horror. That's a good one too. Uh, and also cool. visually, it's kind of fun to do like as a director sort of thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. And you know, parking garages, even though they're kind of boxes, I often find them a little bit confusing. Like they I know that are. there's a... A, a distinct up and down and you're always a little bit concerned am i going down the down properly or am i going down where other people are going up <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you don't want to yeah there is kind of you kind of get confused in that space and they are dark they're really dark yeah yeah, yeah. I, th yeah. I think there's a great uh, you mentioned that it could be a comedy and i'm, I'm seeing like yes. the comedy of it being that the the nerves of not wanting to park somewhere but then 
as you go farther, that just gets scarier and scarier. <laughs> yeah. Like every level maybe going down or going up and it's just getting, uh, I, I think yeah. about that scene in the, the Simpsons where they're on the river and there's like the, the beautiful, uh, there's like the, the river splits and there's like a beautiful place with rainbows and the other place is just like creaking limbs and <gasps> oh darkness. Oh my God, that'd be so great if you could somehow show that visual where the, the like, you know, the person takes the wrong turn and like, there's like the two it's roads the travel. It's arrows, just like yeah. they <laughs> took that yeah. wrong road, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I, I have that con- comedy aspect to it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. maybe she could start out talking to a friend on the phone. The friend's like, why do you always park so far away? And she's like, I'm a bad parker. <laughs> I'm just afraid I'm going to hit somebody and then like as she goes through this horror house she's just being like i should learn how to parallel park i need to (laughs) i need to overcome my problem i'm a terrible parker i park like it's a zombie apocalypse like i just threw the car there ran from it the way that they're (laughs) i always park the furthest away from the door and stuff like that because yeah so i love that too yeah the the and you have the the when you're when you're upset about your parking too you can kind of bring in the shadows with like people maybe about to like judge your parking <laughs> totally. people who are standing like there whispering. like which <laughs> you do feel judged about that oh that's a good idea like whispers that's yeah. kind of fun too yeah that's always scary it's like, always scary and it's like oh wait is somebody, spaces is somebody and watching people whispering? me while i'm parking this is rude <laughs> you can't watch somebody while they're parking it's a very intimate thing <laughs> yeah that's great. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's. I'm I'm gonna. Maybe Thanks we'll roll through another another round. Oh, that was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I think we'll we'll do we'll do another round. I think these are this is this is nice. I think we're, we're trying to catch on to. Oh, do we have somebody? No. Oh, okay. Trying to um. Uh. Catch on to these ideas of like, are there little are there little tropes? Are there little stopping blocks that we can kind of like hit and help us to, to sort of bring through. Uh, to to solidify this idea and make it a little quicker and, and more consistent. Um, I'll just I'll just go randomly. Uh, let's see. Okay, this one is geocaching, a geocache that includes a cursed item or leads to a dark place. Mm. Um. So then again, I I feel like this one is is outside. Uh, has to start with the nice part of geocaching, a nice catch like they. They see it, they find the little nook, and they open it up, and it's like something fun. They see there's another one nearby. Uh, and maybe that's what it is, is they like looking at their phone, and there's like a yawning cave mouth or something that they're kind of <laughs> staring nice. at. Like, get yeah. them really, I picture them being really small with this big, I don't know where like this is. Like Pan's Labyrinth type of like, Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just like making a terrible yeah. noise. If that's the important place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so they're making their way in and they're like, oh, it's, it, it's so close. And kind of looking back, they have that point of no return where they're like, okay, I have to squeeze through this little place or I have to go around this little corner. And they have that one last chance to, to leave. Uh, and then making their way through a dark place, there's something else in there with them. Uh, they're, but they're so close to the, to the cache that they're like, okay, I'll just grab it. Um, and then their hand goes on the nook and then a monstrous hand <gasps> goes over the first hand and maybe that's, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's God. the descent. That was, You've written the descent. That was 59 seconds. 59 <laughs> seconds. Wow. Love it. That was really good. There's good timing. There's al- always a good opportunity with some kind of talisman like that too, if they all bring it back and then like if there's a group of them that they all just start dying. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? There's some kind of, you know, yeah, some kind of group death thing. But I love that. I think that one is like, that's like a perfect like one minute film right there, right? I like that like idea. The hand that... going over. Like, that's yeah, oh, what a great yeah. way to end it. Yeah. I, I like that idea too, though, that they would find something like the group of them would find something, and I, I think with geocaching, you're not really supposed to take oh, no. right. things with you. So they could it could be something cool, and they're like, oh, I've, but but and someone like it they expresses that, that they want to take it, yeah, and then maybe one of them brings it home, and yeah, it's just the the killer could be yeah a spirit that comes with it, or mm-hmm. even just the angry geocacher who left it there, who yeah. like watches it from <laughs> <laughs> like breaking the rules. No, I love that one. Yeah, it's adequately scary, too. Like, yeah. Anytime you go into a small space and there's, like, no chance that you can escape. Like, to me, spelunking 
silly name, but one of the scariest things ever. Like you're gonna go, you you just found a hole to the center of the <laughs> earth, and you're gonna go into it. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. There's some 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 people are just wired different. You know, they right? look at a hole oh. in the ground. They're like, "That's a great afternoon." <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> Uh, okay, Veronica. Yeah. Uh, let's do old photograph. A photograph that changes or predicts the future. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I mean, Dorian Gray a little bit, right? So let's say that this starts out, you know, um, it's a couple moving into a new apartment and they're really excited and upstairs they find this creepy painting uh of just like some old dude and they're like well that's mysterious and weird uh but you know they they set their house into order and they're like we want to get this um painting off but when they go to remove it the face has changed to their family's uh picture and they're like what's going on and then in the image there's like a figure looming behind them and they turn around but there's no figure and when they look at the painting the figure is much closer Ooh. and then they turn around and they're like yeah cut out there let's let's say that that's the ending oh, of that yeah. one <laughs> it's like, like you know how that last one's <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i love that's the, great yeah yeah and that's that's fun to shoot too right like those those things like moving closer um yeah and I, I love an idea that can be done in your house yeah yeah there'd be some fun art to do with that like to take those pictures yeah you could uh i i guess you could photoshop right or you could run th something through i know there's lots of complicated feelings about ai but maybe <laughs> you could uh, run uh something through ai and photoshop in like a monster getting closer mm -hmm. uh, to create that oil painting effect mm -hmm. um or, or just any kind of filter uh and figuring out or maybe you could like adapt that and it's not a painting it's like a mirror or something like that yeah. to make it a little bit easier or even just it's a picture and you take still pictures and then photoshop it into a frame on the in, in when you're editing Oh yeah, that's true. You could edit digital pictures into as long as you, you if you had it locked off. That yeah, yeah, if you had it locked to... off. Um, mm -hmm. So it would not necessarily be. There's a couple of different ways that you could go about it, and yeah. I guess it depends on how you, what effect you were looking for, and whether or not you wanted to, to learn more about, you know, editing or like editing photography, or whether you wanted to do it in camera on the day. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that could be and be cool if those main characters it's them from another time like you know something like that's such a trope but it'd be kind of cool if that was it too yeah like, yeah, yeah. You know? there's so much so who was that old guy right initially <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe you could refine it to be a yeah, little the... bit like it, it was blank before and mm -hmm. then there's the, the family moves in or something like that. yeah yeah and if you have the people in the picture be the people who are acting in it that also yeah. pulls down how many people you need to bring in and yeah. and that type of thing sometimes it could be fun to yeah, because like with big bigger ideas, like I'm thinking about a big cave. I'm like, where am I going to get a cave? <laughs> you know, so can you, you know, put some styrofoam in your basement and spray paint it right. gray? Like or, if it's dark, can you disguise it? Yeah, I said it was a monster. Maybe the old man from the picture is what's in the picture. Mm -hmm. Like he, he's just... Part of me was thinking too, if you had like, you see the picture first and in the background there's this little monster and as it, it like, it's almost like it goes closer and closer yeah. and that's what I was... And then it's like the monster actually gets bigger or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. like those cuts. Like that idea of cutting that way I think really is very effective. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I think it'd be, it could be a fun little mm -hmm. fun little doobly doo. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what we're all about here. We're just making fun little doobly doos. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little guy. It's just a weekend of doobly doops. <laughs> uh, okay, Wanda, you ready for another one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's do. Here we go. Uh, oh, that one's too similar to the one you got before. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, lucky lottery. Winning numbers turn out to be unlucky in real life. Oh, that's another one that has some potential for comedy as well. I'm not a comedy writer, but so lucky lottery, but it turns out to be unlucky in real life, meaning they win money and whatever. And the, 
Yeah, let me think. I'm just, please pitch in here if you guys think anything comes up. So, yeah, I mean, if I won a lot of money, <laughs> what would I do? I'm just trying to think of what would be scary about that because it's like unlucky, unfortunate. Oh, yeah, I guess all kinds of shit could happen. It like, could be very like it could be monkey's paw type thing, like you're winning money, but it's at the cost of somebody else's wealth or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like that, yeah. especially maybe being faced with that choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, maybe yeah. that's the, the rule of the lottery is that you get ten thousand dollars you get a hundred thousand dollars but it comes from other people yeah oh, so yeah. do you want to take ten thousand or like yes. a million dollars from someone else's life i feel like that's Ooh. very thematic of times too mm -hmm. right now like you know so if you met that character in a place where they really needed money and they were feeling pretty desperate and like you know and then yeah being offered that it's like okay and like the first time they take money maybe they don't really really realize but then they can see that maybe there's like a video of the direct results or like a like a kind of a uh, what's the dickens you know tale of two cities or not not the dickens uh where he the Christmas story the Christmas oh, story yeah. you know, right. except yeah. you're seeing videos of what happens oh, to yeah. these people yeah, I, yeah it could be kind of Squid Game esque with like they're constantly being watched and it's it's part partially for money maybe it's like you can join up this lottery you take money from the other people who are in the lottery and everybody is just as desperate as you are and you right. have to watch what taking ten thousand dollars from this person did to their life yeah mm -hmm. I mean, oh it's awful <laughs> yeah it is awful thank you so much for saving me on this by the way i mean i feel like it's almost too complicated for like it'd be a lot to do yeah, for, for sure. one story but yeah i think i think a lot of it like when you think about the, the talking about the character and their decisions i think like the meat of it is in that moment where yeah. they choose to take it even though they know something bad is going to happen right mm -hmm. uh, yeah and then maybe uh having the last thing be facing some maybe facing some kind of consequences or even like really dark, just them sitting and enjoying the money. Yeah. And just like thinking of having to Ooh. think about what they, it's... you know, like, oh, I don't know how greasy that could get really greasy. right? For sure. It's like kind of the, like a uh, greed tale or something like that. Right. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I feel like right now it's too complicated. Like you know, maybe but... it's just a haunted BLT. Yeah. You know, you pull it. <laughs> That's amazing, and they and that could be like a metaphor for addiction too. You keep going back, right. and, it gets, and you just age with each pull. Like, yeah. you know what I mean. Right. And all the money you get, like that's the price you're paying. It's just getting older and older, and then that skeleton thing at the end. Yeah. <laughs> all all horror that's... films can just end with a skeleton. Yes, <laughs> yes. It slow slow pan. No from one the can floor stop you. That's the really good. And then, oh, it's a skeleton. Yeah. The haunted BLT is great because it has all that lights and, and stuff the sounds too. too. Like ding, sound. ding, and everything is really exciting and yeah. happy. So if and you did wonderful. end with a skeleton, it would be like, oh yeah, bouncy lights, beautiful colors, like all these fun noises, jackpot, like ringing out over a dead body. <laughs> yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great too, because that's that's another thing with the with these suggestions. Like they're they're a great jumping point but like you don't have to use every no, word of them no. when you're going through these so like wherever you get um like it like a vlt uh is such a logical jump from from lottery that it's like you still got that idea from the suggestion it just yeah. uh you can be very loose with the one thought i had like of all of the ideas is like dramatizing that monster like because we've kind of like we talked more about that main character but how do you show those beats of like you know the book when you open or whatever the shadows like when i we the prompt was about shadows but i didn't really talk about shadows like how do we how do you visually show that monster to make it scary for the audience so I, i'm just this is me literally like how do you yeah. how do you well that's yeah. that, that's a good thing to come back to i think is uh is where because that that's i i think one of the hardest things in horror is if you really go for scaring people mm -hmm. uh, and so how like thinking about some of these ideas like the the parking garage like where is the what's a good way to sort of go to that parking garage set and have somebody their challenge is that they've parked really far into this place and they have a long distance to go yeah so 
we have there's some built-in tension in that there's like a walk 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 scene walk 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 yeah. walk, walk walk you know there's those cuts of yeah. the walk or, and you're or, just walking or and you walking. can stick it like as far away from the person as possible with the lens that makes them look minuscule and then this tiny little figure in this enormous space sort of like walking mm-hmm. that's really nice cinematically that's really nice but then to kind of represent like the fear like your paranoia is like mm-hmm. like a light flashing across the thing so you can cut to like just light going across this uh, uh, thing it just makes the audience feel the tension they don't necessarily have to know exactly what it is yeah mm-hmm. that's always more interesting anyway like maybe. usually when you see the monster is usually not as interesting yeah. as feeling the monster yeah. right? maybe as she's walking um the lights mysteriously seem to come on just where she's walking mm-hmm. so as she gets to the end of it that closes and then a new light or that turns off a new light comes on but maybe you can see a monster still moving in the dark yeah like the, yeah something the, shuffling through the right barest hint and then of it's light. like there's something about that and i don't know if that's cinematically possible but that just density of darkness of her just being swallowed into the de- like some kind of light just be like if there was a lighting effect there was like almost like fades out or something it's like she gets swallowed into the darkness so mm-hmm. it's very simple yeah. but you know, but I, I've done a couple of animations for um, the film challenges as well, and that would be doable within animation, right? Like very easily, That's cool. you can draw anything you want. So you could just have a character like in light, and then the the you know the the darkness swallowing her. It, you could draw it any way that you wanted. Mm-hmm. And what about for your guys, Isaiah? Do you think like of of like again like dramatizing and showing the monster or like or are there even the beats of building to the monster like mm. you know what i mean because I, I i've often heard it said and i think that i agree that like if you can show the monster less that's actually Agreed. better because your mind will always invent something spookier and creepier than um what you can build or show like the, cl- the classic is Jaws, but Aliens, it mm-hmm. also was true in Alien and Aliens. And, like, the less that you see of the monster, the more the audience fills in, the more th- the deeper the connection is. They it, it creates this, like, real sense of tension. Like, when are we going to see it? Um, or do you even get to see it at all mm-hmm. is, is mm-hmm. another one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's another interesting way to start thinking about ideas in, instead of thinking about plot. Like, what can I do... What's the scary part yeah. of this? Because uh, I, I, I think that now that we're talking about the the parking garage too, another thing I'm thinking of is like, uh, what are elements of a parking garage? And one thing I think of immediately is the echo. Mm-hmm. Um, so the when you're talking about like showing the footsteps, one part of that is that you'd hear the footsteps on the concrete. Yeah. And then if they stop, and you hear other footsteps but you can't yes. see like that's then... that kind of stuff right yeah and same with the the, uh, the uh, geocaching like like the obstacles to get into that space like you know what are they what do they hear what do they think and it can be like that kind of unnameable but it's scary right? yeah or they, they hear some sort of like monster sound and yeah. then oh it turned out it was just a squirrel yes. or something like yeah. that but then yeah. the yeah. monster's lurking behind them it's, a, it's always just a squirrel <laughs> always, yeah. Going and, like, dramatizing the hand in yours is very it's much uh as much like that that i feel like that's very executable like the hand coming out like some mm-hmm. kind of scraggly kind of a hand is a is a lot easier to manage than like a full yeah yeah costume. and it's Absolutely. scarier like you know and often those little you've talked about it too those major close-ups and things like that like they're often like even just an eyeball whatever is much scarier than the full form Mm -hmm. there's something about that that's you know again like i think you can't fully name it so you fill in a lot yourself you know and and there's this thing in comedy that like comedy is a wide shot so if you film things wider good lighting everything clear Often the audience, they'll be like, oh, this is just a moment of normalcy. Like, this is just a normal moment or a funny moment. And you could, as a filmmaker, use that sense of normalcy to introduce something really creepy. Mm -hmm. But that is something to consider because, like, brightly lit places and clear views of people generally are not that spooky. (laughs) Unless, uh, what's, uh, uh, oh my gosh, what's the one that's set in Sweden? Midsummer. Midsummer, Midsummer, yeah. yeah, that's all... Incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I agree. Generally not, but like that's an exception for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it definitely, it definitely can be done. Um, well, well let's, let's take, let's just take another one and think of it from that point of view, like try to create first the, 
what is the scary element of this and okay uh, and you guys are better w with this, so I'll I'll help fill in. <laughs> well, I think well, this is great too because uh, uh, you know sometimes you're working on your own, sometimes you have a group of people, mm -hmm. and being able to sort of go through it, it can really help uh, um, um, flesh things out really quickly. But also, uh, if if everybody has a little input, everybody's a little bit more invested for sure, uh, and and you, you all yeah. get a, a piece of uh, of of what comes out of it. Uh, Let's do, oh, I think that's too easy. <laughs> well, well, let's do an easy one first then. Car trouble. A car breaks down in the worst possible place. Do you want me to take this one? Well, I think we can all just kind of okay, jump we're... in as we as we think of things. So. Okay. I like it because the car is broken down, which yeah. means it's just somewhere. You yeah. just yeah. have to park it somewhere. So the, what's what could be the scary element in that, if we're thinking scary first? Like... You're isolated. Nobody is around for miles. Maybe it's somebody who's like got to walk to a gas station, and they're walking alone on this deserted road. Like that's and and something is following them, or they think something's mm -hmm. following them. Mm. Yeah, being I th I think being alone, like it being a single character, makes it kind of inherently scary. Mm -hmm. I think the I, immediately I would think if you had two people. You would want to split them up. You'd immediately uh, the watching the Night of the Living Dead the other night. That's what totally what they do. Yeah. <laughs> they're driving to a graveyard, and yeah, they're immediately split up because one of the zombies gets the brother right away. Right. Part of me thinks also the car is a monster, so oh. like the car breaks down, they get out, they're under there, and it's just like something weird happens. It either tries to grab it immediately or suck its oh. head in. And then the car just starts freaking falling. I know Stephen King has done this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't watched the movie or read the book. That like, that's a part of me was thinking too, like the car, the car, the car just coming still. after. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd need a bit of a budget for that because the car could do some fun stuff. Right. <laughs> but I, I like the idea that they try to fix it. Because that puts them in an even more confined, yeah. right? You're under the car. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe there's just a monster in the car, some weird, like, you know, and then it just starts following them. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, think about that. Like, you get it, you you feel like you've got the car working, and you get up, and it's, like, the passenger door is now open. Yeah. Oh, like some, yeah. Like, and then yeah. That, I, I, I try and think about if, if I was in that situation, what would I be absolutely horrified to like what is the worst thing I can come up with that would happen you know like when you're when you're walking alone sometimes the worst thing that your mind can come up with is that you're not alone yeah and just that thought yeah. is enough to like make a situation yeah. go from totally normal to to quite scary I really like that idea like they're on one side maybe fixing the tire and then when they get up the key or like the the door is open mysteriously they go to close it mm -hmm. they go back to the driver's side their keys are gone yeah what's yeah what the, what's happening mm. yeah and it'd be kind of cool if like you, we did have some insight into this character maybe they're taking off from something maybe they're do you know what i mean total arsehole like you know what i mean some kind of thing to the, help kind of like increase the stakes and understand they were what's on going bluetooth on. and oh i'm going into a dead zone yeah. oh, <laughs> oh, cell yeah. phone yeah. dead zones <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's just what's the payoff at the end of that one? Like that's a little harder because it's a big open space. Like they could run to like a building or lock themselves in the car, but then they can crash the window in. Like, but they could run to a building and that sort of thing. But like, what's the? I'm just harder to get that final like cut out. That would be like mm -hmm. unless we did have a stronger sense of who that character was. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like what some if kind the car of stakes. Starts driving on its own. There you go. Yeah. They go inside. They can't open the door. Mm -hmm. The car starts running on its own. <laughs> I don't know. Takes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hard one. I think that one's a harder one in a way. It has to be a much longer, bigger story, I think. You know what I mean? Like, because if the monster's in the car, like, yeah, there's something about that that just feels a little bit more difficult in my mind. I don't know. It's definitely difficult to fit a story into. I think, like, just thinking about it as one of those shorts where you m maybe are just trying to scare, like, the yeah. whole goal of it is to to have, like, a scare in it. Mm -hmm. Maybe takes a bit of the... Because I, I agree, like, you want to know 
why are they there? Where are they going? Like, what do we, do we want them to get there, or are they in our soul and we want them? We want something right, to be and then here. like so, then this monster kind of we feel some revenge fantasy or some some kind of satisfying moment mm. that's like you know because like the scare of the hand coming out that's just satisfying on its own, but like if you're in the middle of nowhere and the car like there's nowhere kind of to go with it. Do you know what I mean? Unless we do have a little bit of a sense of some kind of uh, emotional stakes, I think I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, why were they on the road in the first place? Why are they in this dead area? Like, mm-hmm. what, what kind of person would be driving late at night, presumably, in a dead zone? Maybe they're a salesperson. they got a big call coming up. Or, like, they, they, oh, they got that's a, lead kind of to, a lead to, like, a job or something. And that could be, like, maybe it's, like, you know, kind of a metaphor and greed or something. And they've just got all kinds of shit in the car or something like that. And it's just, like, I don't know, something like that. Like, you know, yeah, the their car is just, full like, of, of old throwing their just stuff like out. Just, like, my, old, my yeah. car is, like, my expression is oh. always throw it in the backseat. Because, yeah. like, if it's in the backseat, it doesn't. That's, okay, so if there's a bunch of stuff in the back seat, then that's where the monster is, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Like, they, are, they get back in the car. They are, like, they look. There's nothing in the car. But then they get back in the car and the stuff starts to move yeah. and something is coming out. And if that character is just throwing crap in there, like, you know, there's something about then when the monster creeps over and gets it, then you feel a satisfaction of being gotten. <laughs> Maybe the person you know I mean? was like, littering. Yeah. They, like, yeah. They, they're yeah, eating just some stuff and they throw it throw out, out the and they, window. like, whatever. It, it then either suddenly goes that the back becomes more of a story, right? Yeah. And, yeah. like, and just a, and gives you an ending. So if the monster does finally get them or whatever, it just yeah. makes more sense. Yeah, and of course, right. this, this came then out that of, person like, thinking can, about that person Then the monster character. can throw them like garbage. Yes. And then, then you got a full ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. great. I mean, that's a full, that's a, that's a horror short right there. You can do it really fast, right? Because you've got... Just the, and you know, they're, they're not taking care of their car. Their stuff is going everywhere. That's probably like, you know, there's candy bars in the engine. You know, yeah. like that they, they have to clean out uh, mm-hmm. all that, all that sort of stuff. Um, oh yeah. They're trying to, if, if, if like their tire is out or something, they got to pull stuff out of their trunk. Their trunk is full of junk and they're littering more. Yeah. Yeah. I love the idea of that character, like throw them in the garbage can or something like, or something, oh, whatever yeah. the monster. Or whatever. Oh, the monster. Yeah. yeah. Puts, them, puts them in a garbage bag or drops them off in a, <laughs> yeah. in a trash Throws can. Throws them in the trunk. Yeah. Oh, that in doing that cinematically, like maybe the car, we don't see who's driving the car, but the car like goes up to a house where there's bins and everything and, and just, just deposits a garbage it. bag good. and then drives away. That's good. <laughs> that That's is good. good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, because then you don't even have to have a monster stuff. It just could be embodied in the car itself. Yeah. Like, you know, mm-hmm. That's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that too when you have, because uh, you can totally mix those tones as well, right? Like mm-hmm. you could have a genuinely scary part right at the beginning, right in the middle, and then end on a comedic, Tone. yeah like that's you, yes you it's a great fi- a final beat and again it gives that audience like yeah just a feeling of satisfaction like that would be a very satisfying beat i love that one mm-hmm. yeah i think that's good i've i've done a lot of these as as comedy uh and a lot of times i think heather uh has heard me a million times say i'm gonna do something really scary this year this year I'm going to do something scary. And I set out to do something scary, and it doesn't quite work, so I just turned it into a comedy. That's so smart, though. But yeah. we mentioned it earlier. Like, yeah. they are kind of similar. They like are. You're, you're, are. you're playing with tension in comedy yeah. and in, in horror. Yeah. yeah. So if your scare isn't turning out as scary as you want it to be, rather than saying, like, oh, I'm I'm not happy with this, let's try something else, then, like, can you can you shift that into a comedic beat? Yeah, like just, even the even like moments like the fake blood and stuff like that. Sometimes you like if that's not working, just like just embrace it. Like, yeah, exploit it. You know. Yeah, yeah like yeah. your if your your blood looks too much like chocolate sauce, and you're a guy who's littering a lot. Like, oh, I need to see a doctor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Licking the chocolate I'm sauce. I'm bleeding off. brown blood. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I taste so good? <laughs> My blood sugar is very sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, okay, well, I think uh, we'll we'll sort of start to wrap it up there now. So I, I guess uh, maybe based on this, um, I mean, I, I hope everybody who was listening, you've you've had a great time. Uh, we've obviously had a very good time. We got a little carried away, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I hope that there's something in this that you can uh, pull out. Are there any like last thoughts that like having done this, uh, you you leave with anybody? Um, yeah, like just classic advice for the challenges is done is better than good. Like having a finished product 
is always great. Make that your goal to, if you're if you're trying it. Just make something, go and, and try to get it done. And you know, being good is for the the second or third draft. Getting it done is for the the challenges. And at the end of it, even after all the struggles, you're gonna have like a little story that you can be proud of that that you might want to spin off into something else so definitely go for it try and get her done and uh have fun yeah have fun like just take some risks and you know just have fun yeah yes. keep it simple yeah yeah and creative risks yes don't risk your lives yeah. yes <laughs> fail <Yeah>. joyfully <laughs> But don't, <laughs> but don't hurt yourself yeah. or others. <laughs> but I, I think there were some great, uh, some great starting points in here too. Like think about your, who is it? What are the decisions they're going to make? Where yeah. are they? Where are they? What are the elements of the location that you're going to put them in that you can use to, to scare? Uh, and maybe if, if you found that uh, an inspiring way to start, like what is the scary part of your ask for if you mm -hmm. of your uh, of your suggestion what is the part of it that you think you could build uh that that tense moment uh and then fill in the blanks around that who's the character who's getting scared what's the decision that causes them to get uh in a situation they shouldn't be in yeah, yeah. filmmaking i find is all about like problem solving how do i like you you've created a script how do i shoot it you've got this one scene with this kind of prop or this um, art design idea how do I make it come to life and uh, just you know go for it and have fun mm -hmm. yeah yes problem solve <laughs> and solve your problems with fun yeah Prob puzzles are supposed to be fun so. <laughs> and also create lots of problems for your character yes yeah yeah okay yeah. great well thank you both for coming and doing this this has been yeah, a lot of fun thank you uh, thanks fun. so much thank that was you. so fun and uh to everybody who's doing the challenge this weekend uh good luck and have the best time i can't wait to see what you come up with <laughs> bye 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 <laughs>